The Boxer Rebellion, all done in one gigantic mega day. That was the best, probably the best campaign I have ever played. I, I, the whole group, um, the whole group at Man Cave Brotherhood of Gaming just loved it. It was phenomenal. Um, the scenarios were, were, were well done. The, the amount of research, the history, the figures, the terrain was just unbelievable. In 1800s, China had one of the largest gross national products in the world. Unnoticed by Western powers, and they all wanted a piece of it. Almost every major country in the world had subdued parts of China for their own econo economies and benefits. But by the summer of 1900, matters in northern China had come to a head. Hundreds of foreigners and their Chinese Christian allies were bottled up in the Tianjin concessions and the diplomatic legations in Peking. Support the king, kill the foreigner became the rallying cry of the boxers, and the Empress Dowager made the fateful decision to fully ally herself and her dynasty with this growing, vigorous militia. War was declared. The resolution of the crisis would see the beginning and the end of the Qing dynasty, as well as the rise of both Japan and the United States as world powers. So how do you create a Saturday's war game with your club to recreate this tension, 55 days of Peking and the entire campaign that surrounded it. I had to sit back and think, how could I do that mathematically, strategically, and make it a fun gaming experience for all on one day? First, I made them make strategic decisions. I broke the team up into various factions, the boxers, the Chinese, and the foreigners. I then made the Chinese player decide where he was going to put his troops, that there were four potential fronts, so he was confused of where the Allies were coming. But the foreigners chose the path, oh, historically, through the Taku forts, Tianshan, and Yangtzen, and up to Peking from the south. So I decided to build in, at the same time, various factors. I built in a doomsday clock, ticking off every time somebody moved from one star to the next, and the time it would take them to move to those stars. They also had to make choices of where they would put points that they won on the battlefield, either into speed or combat strength. And as they moved up the math, the time started ticking away based on how well they did on that battle and the choices that they made, either plus or minuses. They also had to choose the direction of their attacks, whether it would be to the north or the south. So I made it very complex for them. So let's take a look at the forces that they had to play with. First off, I have the Boxer and Imperial Chinese armies. Um, painted blue moon, 15 millimeter. Um, nicely done figures. I, I really enjoyed painting them. They looked great. Painted in some Kenchu Braves and some others. Tried to represent uh, the various different foreign powers that were there as well as well as the Chinese Imperial armies and tried to assemble them all into a force to make them feel like they were actually playing with these different factions with their pluses and minuses, strengths and weaknesses. And moving troops across the table is always quite satisfying. Artillery, Gatling guns, cavalry. So the first battle they had to fight through was Seymour's uh, expedition to Peking in an ambush by the boxers. The next one that they had to survive was the waves of attacks by the Chinese and the boxers in the legation quarters, only half the U.S., Russian, and British quarters, but nevertheless quite an interesting thing. The Allies had to assault the Taku forts, so we built builds or boards to recreate the Taku forts. Then the land battles around Tianjin, uh, against the mud forts, and finally we recreated the Tianjin city and a fortress battle. Andy, that's uh, very classy how you drink that tea. Wow. It's outstanding. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he probed me earlier, though. <laughs> My ass still hurts. I was first, man. <laughs> Seymour barely got off the trains when the boxer assault started the ambush. It was a bloody event all the way to the end. I didn't. I, right? I learned more from his little dissertation. My, my, 
I mean, I read about the uh, the opening wars. Yeah. In, in I knew school. a little bit about yeah. A little bit about. In the end, the boxers overran most of the foreign troops on the board. They barely got off with their lives, but nevertheless, the boxers played a brilliant ambush, and the foreigners are still reeling from that experience. Because the ambush was such a success, uh, there'll be very few troops that can be added to the Tianjin battle later. Pluses and minuses will come off, and this will really hurt the Allies. Now the Taku siege has begun. Will the foreigners be able to overrun the Chinese in time, gaining precious time that they need to get to Peking? Let's see. <clears throat> the stagger and the repeater, they cancel each other out. It's going to be the same. Yeah, minus three. Okay, so 19 to the 20. Lob on him. Ooh. A little lob on him. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. Oh, it's a stagger. That's a stagger. It's a stagger. So it's a stagger. I want straight up. Straight, straight up. up. These, that's new, right? That's yeah. new. Yeah, these are the old ones. This is new. Yeah. This is new. Okay. okay, you're shooting. Okay. Breach letters to. The Taku forts fell, but not after three waves, which cost the Allies minus points in timing. Not too bad, but it was a bloody affair. But the Taku forts are now gone, and the way to Tianjin has been opened. While that battle was raging, the boxers attacked the legation in Peking. Wave after wave of boxers fell upon the British, the Americans, the Russians, the French, and the Italians, fighting them off wave after wave, almost endless amounts of boxers. It was a pretty tense moment, and I'll tell you, Wes was sweating. Andy just pounded on him, from left and right, and it was a very exciting moment. But in the end, let's see what happened. The fighting was fierce, but Wes had well placed his Gatling guns, throwing off the boxers coming from the walls. And he did his best, just rushing at the British and the American embassies. Well, it was a bloody day and Wes was exhausted after that hour. Boy, what a day. But the battle around Tianjin, this was going to be a heated affair. Uh, wow, the Russians and the Germans had to fight themselves across a field of wet, marshy ground, bridges, rivers, hills, and out into the open plains just to find the Chinese arrayed in a battle line with cavalry, artillery, anchored on a city to their flank, and of course, a mud fort in the rear. But Wes made a valiant charge across that field, hitting Lawrence's Chinese troops. Boy, was that a battle. This will give you an idea of the battlefield that the Allies had to sweep across, crossing the valleys, the bridge, and across the open fields to assault the city and the mud fort. The Chinese Imperial Army was waiting for him. Minus three, he moved, so it's another minus two, so that's going to be negative three total. Out of range. Plus your disorder. I did that already. Kevin. Out of range is another no. So plus two. You uh, have initiative. This was a hard-fought battle right up to the mud fort and the gates. Really take my hand off to both of these who battled across these fields. Ooh, look at this. Chinese are pressing the Mongolian wall. The American legation is holding, but barely, because John's playing it. <laughs> <laughs> the Brits are cowering from the imperial Chinese and boxer invasion, pressing on all sides, up the streets, up the canals. Minus four because of the fortification. Oh, these guys? That one over there first. Yeah. 19. Got a stagger. Okay. Which one are you doing? Like this one? That one. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to fire up on the same wall over the heads. 
as he said I could, but now it is negative four, negative five, negative six, so just 20. 20. Nope. <laughs> you can't even see it from there. You're saying nope. <laughs> <laughs> thinks he's winning. He thinks he's winning. How do you? Okay. Oh, the boxers are overwhelming. He might be right. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Wes, how does this make you feel? I don't like it. <laughs> the second wave of boxers and Imperial troops almost got into the compound. Well, actually, they did twice, but were pushed out. What a fierce battle this was on this day and this wave. Oh, the siege of Tian Sen begins. John adds his battle strategy. Let's see if he can take the gatehouses. This is going to be a hard fought one against hardened right, so troops. The siege of Tian Sen. Stretch built. It's unbelievable. Initiative. Yep. All right, Kim. This, uh, this, was, this was the whole battle of Tian Sen right here. And uh, Steve and, and John went at it with the Imperials. They chose the, the relief force to attack uh, three gates at the same time, but the Chinese put on an unbelievable defense. Two of the gatehouses fell through heavy bombardment, but the casualties that the Chinese inflicted on the foreign, uh, the foreigners was devastating. devastating. It um, impacted their maneuver towards Peking heavily. There's, there's like nothing Steve. left. There's just nothing left of the of the Allied forces. So it's I mean, un unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. And, and and I have to say this, guys. This is this is John, but uh, Kevin literally hand scratch. He made all of this, all of this terrain. I mean, all these all these boards, these battle boards. Well, enough of the praise. Anyway, I had fun doing it anyway. And besides, Greg from Little Wars TV gave me the inspiration. Well, here's the last wave of the boxers and the Chinese while they're fighting Tian Sen. This is happening. And uh, boy, this last wave was incredible. They barely held out. Of course, Tian Sen finally fell. Then they had to work their way all the way to Peking, up the back roads to make sure that they got there in time. Oh man, the Gatling gun and the British legation is now gone. Uh-oh. The, uh, it's starting, to, Andy is starting to put some pressure. <laughs> Uh-oh. What so are we going to have here? The Marines have there. moved off the wall. They're taking it in the shorts. Did they see it? I don't think so. Oh man. No. The boxers are poised to overrun. Okay. I don't know if they do boxers. We both of them laid out. Man. Wes, what's going on over here, buddy? Words cannot explain <laughs> the carnage. The carnage. That is laid out before us. <laughs> Oh my God. So the boxers are coming up over the barricades on the walls. This is intense, dude. Yeah, dude, this is right, This right is about there. to die roll. Are you ready for it? About the die roll. Here, will they make it? Here we go, Gibbs. A three. Two. Oh! oh! Don't forget, I have my general attached. Oh, that's a 10, that's a 12, it's over. It's... <laughs> awesome. You know, in the background, why that last wave of boxers and Imperial Chinese tried to work their way over the walls. John was moving the relief force from Tian Sen North. Would he make it? It was getting close. The minuses were piling up. His die rolls moving from one star to the next. Luckily, he put enough points into speed to make sure that he made it. He had to do it on a die roll of three to six and move over five stars, but he made it. Let's see how close it actually was. It's getting down to when he's actually getting yeah. to Peking. He needs he needs a roll. Yeah, he needs a roll to get it. Oh my God! Look at that. Here, he's, he, 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 why don't got, you show the guy who got, actually did it? Hey, you got his. Hey, you got to see my mug. Made. This is great. This feels so good. This feels so he good. He made it with <laughs> one day left. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Feeling good. Thank Look you, Kevin. There's the strategic maps. Love it. And burning up time. Unbelievable. China. 
it's one thing that you have yeah. battles that are amazing, yeah. right? And you have beautiful forces, beautiful train, but all the background and the concepts behind it with yeah. these decision makers yeah. as you go from from battle to battle, it's yeah. just it's unbelievable. I got to tell you, just the extras. You know, we could do a chain of battles, but what you did extra, yeah. that's what's mind-boggling. Yeah, yeah. You guys you guys almost have to be here. You just to see it, to believe it. It, it just, it was unbelievable. It's okay. literally, literally, literally the best campaign I think all of us have ever played. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Kaiser Kevin killed it, man. Thanks. Churchill. Yes. Churchill. <laughs> okay, the day was over. What a day. But I think everybody learned a lot about the Boxer Rebellion. Chinese history and how it impacted their lives today. It actually worked out extremely well and very historical. We had close to nine battles during the day, lots of strategic and tactical decisions, and near misses and near wins. It was a great day, and I have to say my gaming club is a lot of fun. We, uh, we really worked it hard today, and we had a great time and wanted to thank Little Wars TV for giving me the inspiration to do something so grand. Thanks, fellas. And most of all, I have to thank my friend Andy. Andy, without your help, I would have never been able to pull this off. You're the best man. Your mind is brilliant and your friendship is much appreciated.